What is going on everyone? It is Foul Play here and we're back again for another Modern League. Um, and at the moment there seems to be a bit of a breakout um, of a black red deck that's going on at the moment. Uh, running lightning scale elementals and things like that to make you discard stuff. Uh, so I'm liking a card like uh, Sentinel's Eyes a lot more, give us that vigilance to go with it, the first strike to stop them from uh, killing our creature when we block. Um, so we kill them before damage. We don't have to discard anything. All fine and dandy. Um, all right. So other than that, we've got our counter spell package here. Uh, we've got our creature package here. Invisible Stalker being the two-two hexproof unblockable. Uh, no core spirit dancers today. And yeah, let's get into the leg. All right. So here we are for match number one. Uh, we are versing Boland, and we've got a no creature hand on the draw. Uh, we're gonna mull. Sands looking a lot better. We're going to keep this one. And I'll just look to bottom the aqueous form here. Hopefully no turn one discard spell. There's like some argument to keeping the aqueous form in hand there. Um, oh, mostly for if we want to uh, force a negation. Uh, we do need a force negation this one. Uh, pitch the curious obsession, because uh, curious obsession is probably more valuable than the ethereal armor this game. Oh man, that one stings a little bit. Uh, that's fine though. Uh, we'll just play out the bogle now, and pass the turn. Let's see what else our opponents got. Damn, looks like they've got the uh, cathartic reunion here. Discarding t double ox. Alright, well, no dredge cards in the graveyard so far. And I think it's... We're going to be better off most of the time, long run, if we just cast a Stalker here. We use that unblockable to beat our opponent down. Uh, it's way too risky going in on the Slippery Bogle and then being stonewalled by some Narco Meavers or... I don't even have Flying here. Just any creature stonewalling us. So here's the Arid Mesa. Interesting time to... Pick Dredge back up. Uh, so Merchant to the bin with the Shriekhorn activation. And Hardcast Golgari Thug. Alright, well, uh, we're drawing a few more Hexproof creatures here. We're not going to attack. We don't want to enable our opponent finding Dredge. Uh, so we're not going to attack with the Bogle. We're going to attack with the Stalker, of course. Get in there. Uh, so I guess hopefully they blank on some Creeping Chills. And Dredge cards all together. Um... Oh, they found a Dakmore Salvage. Okay, so they've milled Bloodgast and Prized Amalgam. Or dredged Bloodgast and Prized Amalgam. What else? What other tricks have we got in hand? Uh, they're now at the enough cards where they can escape the Ox. Uh, they're getting Bloodgast back here. So yeah, really we just need the top of our library to be kind. Um... Chooses not to use Bloodgast ability? Interesting. So he's going to exile the Bloodgast for the prized amalgam? Alright, sure. Yep. Dubbing, creeping chill, discarded from hand, one found from the library. Alright, that one's going to slow us down. Uh, let's look for a daybreak or at least some vigilance in the form of uh, Sentinel's Eyes even. Spirit Mantle's uh, adding two power. That's a two-turn clock here. So we'll slam this one down. We'll attack. Uh, we'll look to chump block the ox with the Slippery Bogle as well. And just keep pressuring. Try to get that win. They find Narco Amoeba. All right, that's not the worst. They also find a Life from the Loam, which they can dredge. Uh, they dredge into a Creeping Chill and double Golgari Thug. Big yikes here. So pretty much we need Daybreak Coronet at the moment. Oh, Sentinel's Eyes would do it. Sorry, um... Sentinel's Eyes won't quite do it. We need... Staggering Insight, probably. Hmm. Alright. Uh, talk about uh, drawing poorly. Damn. Drew, uh, we drew three creatures this game. That's unfortunate. 
And while to six, we used force, uh, ditching our cartouches of uh, curious obsession. Sorry. Um, all right, let's let's try to chump blocks. Pretend we have path to exile or something. So my opponent saw all four creeping shields this game, starting with like two in hand. We got some pretty nice graveyard hate though as well. Uh, we got our surgical extractions, which are going to come in pretty clutch. Another ox. See if they find any blood gas or anything. All right, million billion triggers. No more creeping chills left to find. <laughs> I think we're we're dead for exaxes anyway. If we block the ox, we take uh, six. What else could you possibly be doing? Conflagrate for the face? All right, sure. All right, cool. I wonder if Dredge is still packing discard uh, in this day and age. All right, those are the cards that semi do something. I think having effects like Force of Negation and Stubborn Denial is going to be very, very strong. Um, they just allow you to obviously counter your opponent's uh, thing that, that puts dredges in the yards, whether it's Cathartic Reunion or Shriekhorn. Being able to counter one of those is very strong. Arcane Flight is pretty weak because they can jump block with uh, Narco Amoebas. We probably want to keep in the Spirit Mantle though. 63 cards. I think Trickbind is pretty reactionary and that's not really where we want to be. Maybe just a Cartridge of Solarity out as well and we'll get into that one. Alright, so... Be on the play, another rubbish uh, seven, so going down. All right, this is really good six. Let's keep it. Really good six. Uh, we will ditch out of car waste. Being on the play as well, invisible stalker is so much less of a liability. Oh, opponent with the turn one gemstone mines. Get out of town, buddy. Get ready for the turn one um, cathartic reunion here. That's uh, just dirty. Oh, lack from the loan, that's fine. <laughs> that is much better than what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> Alright, well we can't utilize any of the mana from this Wardlaw Grove next turn, so hopefully we draw a white land or blue. Um, I guess we can utilize it for Spirit Mantle, right? I, I really want to draw white, though, if possible. Might even look to slow roll the Daybreak Coronet so I don't get two for one here. All right, we do find Sea Chrome Coast. All right, so I think we just slow roll. Like, the, they've even got mana up for Nature's Claim here. There's just no way that I'm playing into that. All right, let's get in. Let's attack. One of these days, we'll find one of our seven uh, auras that lets us draw cards. Opponent on 12. All right, what else have we got to dredge, buddy? Another life from the loam. It's in the main phase, so they've drawn a card. Cathartic Reunion. They've found something of importance now. Dredging life from the loam. And did they just break on dredges? They did, but they have an ox in the yard now. So they can discard hand with ox. All right, it comes ox paying costs. Yep. All right, how much are you dredging? Discarding Chalice of the Void. Oh yikes! I'm glad that one didn't uh, get played and stuffed me up. Double Chalice, dude. This guy's hard on the chalices. All right, well, we'll just take a bit. We'll play our Daybreak Coronet and all hunky dory after that. 
Um, anything from the graveyard? I even want to uh, surgical extraction. Not at this point. Alright, well, we'll pass through our opponent and see what happens. Currently, they've had two creeping chills. Or at least, uh, there's only two left in the deck. I don't know if they've uh, quite got both of them. So they've hard cast Life from the Loam again. No Ox in the graveyard this time. They do have a Conflagrate. Uh, let's get rid of this Life from the Loam and uh, just pay Life to do that. Stop the dredge. So two life from the loams in hand. Now he's got all mana in hand and is in his library, uh, which we will take a little sneak peek at. All right, so that's all fine. In his library, he's still got some creeping chills. No other tech other than chalice, so no nature's claims. That's really good for us. Blood gas back. Oh, they could have a nature's claim in hand. Flashing back, conflagrate, sure. Yes, we block Bloodgust. And because we don't want to put Ox in the yard so they can empty their hand and draw three cards, right? Um, that would just be a mistake. All right, cool. So <laughs> Chalice of the Void, that one's a scary one. No Thought Seize either, which is important information because we don't have to worry about Leyline of Sanctity now. I think, potentially, we might want to bring back in at least one Arcane Flight for the other Cartouche. Uh, just as an extra blue card to pitch to Force of Negation here. Alright, now this is the sort of hand I like to see. Let's uh, snap this one up. Hopefully no turn one Chalice. Or, like, turn two Chalice, sorry. Turn 2 Chalice would be very, very rude. This is where I want to see Dredge try and do its Dredge things, just so I can resolve my my first lot of auras. After that, that's fine. Shock in, Stomping Ground for Haggle. Alright. Oh, man. Uh, that's not too bad. They don't get any Dredges in the yard there. They get double Creeping Chill, which is scary for our life total. Um... But overall, that's absolutely fine. No chalice, no chalice, sweet. Alright, we're fine. We've got this. They find life from loam, uh, stinkweed, and a thug. A lot of stuff in the graveyard. Not too much, which is easy to get back outside of ox. And we've got the sentinel's eyes here. Wonder if I get punished if I don't play Sentinel's Eyes, um, Ethereal Llama. It's the most damage. I don't really need to draw anything here. As much as it would be nice to cast a Curious Obsession there and draw an extra card, I think that's a trap. We need to be able to block things like Ox. Um, and I guess maybe they have a couple of lone... A couple of, like, Nature's Claims, maybe, which they didn't board in Game 2 for some reason. I don't know. <clears throat> we'll just play to avoid the blowout as much as possible here. Alright, here comes Ox. Uh, so they're going to get a lot of dredge here because their hand was full of dredges. Another Creeping Chill. That's Creeping Chill number three, I believe. And he's got two prized amalgams in the graveyard that are going to trigger off this Narco Amoeba. I haven't seen any Silver Smoke goals in this list, right? Um, 
Yeah, this guy's not running Silver Smart Goal. That's interesting. Oh, that's a pretty good one. It's a little bit late and redundant though. Um, attack for eight. They probably chump block with Narco Meaver. Maybe they don't. Maybe they're just concerned about pushing damage. Now, graveyard wise, anything I want to exile here that could be a problem. I didn't see Blast Zone either. Maybe let's just get rid of these life from the loams just to be safe here. Uh, just in case he like dredges into a blast zone. And three cards in hand. Uh, he's got very little left in his library this time. <clears throat> yeah, he can't win this game. He's just going to mill himself out trying. He can't win the race either. Not with Slippery Bogle this big. He's at the point where he needs to stop dredging because he's got nothing good left to target. He's got Triple Shriek Horn, Stinkweed Imp, Prized Amalgam, Double Narco Amoeba, Double Cathartic Reunion, and Land Left. He's got nothing. Alright, some Blood Gas. whoop de doo That's fine. Alright, cool. Well... <laughs> Enjoy the sweet, savoring, slow victory that we're going to go through here after he chump blocks us a million times. Didn't get the draw train going. It's a little bit upsetting. Conflagrate, target us, sure. Do you know the way that uh, First Strike and Lifelink works? Probably not. Get rid of the Ox, and we're on 18. Oh, we got a 2. All right, well, opponent is tapped out, so let's just take this moment to play double Ethereal Armor, attack for 20, and uh, good times. Very good times. All right, so we are back here for match number 2. Uh, we are on the plate. We're versing Obosh Prowess. Ooh, that's going to be a scary matchup. Got a relatively painful hand. No life gain. But we do have a stubborn denial, which could be good. I think we can keep this, but I'm not super happy with it. These Attica Waste could be fetch lines, but they're sort of placeholding, um, like a a blue white Horizon Canopy type land that has been speculated to be printed in uh, Modern Horizons Two, along with all the other lands that haven't been printed yet. Alright, that's a bit better. We get to save some life now. Uh, let's just attack. It's it's not worth jump blocking here. If they like leave mana up, attack, and then they use stomp, I lose my protection from creatures and his creatures are two, three, and kills mine, so I really don't want that to happen. Uh, stomp stops damage from being prevented. Alright, so just an attack with these two. That's fine by me. Hopefully no main deck Blast Zone. Blast Zone's a pretty big wrecking ball for us against Mono Red Prowess. Just when you think you're getting there, they um, start going pretty hard. Alright, Glace they blanked on their light up the stage a little bit. We find Curious Obsession. Well, now we got to attack. Attack, look to draw some life gain, hold up Stubborn Denial, which is empowered ferocity-wise. Uh, this is, like, pretty sweet, actually. We draw Force as well. Alright, that's all really nice. I'm very happy about all of this right now. Stubby D. Sorry, Mono Red Pro S, not today. So two turn clock, and we can get the W. Uh, I suppose I should slow roll that force. Let's get into our attack here. 
see what information we get uh, as far as card draw wise is concerned. Um, all right, let's just hold up force. I uh, will just pitch the stalker for the force here. Targets like Lava Dart, Manamorphose, Firebolt's fine, I'll let that happen. Oh, he's going for some sort of effects before damage here. Alright, um... Yep. Force of negation. Hopefully no lava dart to follow this up. Lava dart will kill us. Oh no. No, no, no. Well either one killed us, so that's unfortunate. Damn. Unlucky. What was our next card? Boo. Alright, well, I guess maybe we could have switched to chump blocking at some point there, but no times really seemed like a good time as far as that was concerned for me. Uh, Alright, so that, and we do need to bring in some trick binds as well, because like I said, Blast Zone is a big issue. Some of the decks run Ratchet Bomb instead. I think we can probably remove a lot of our evasion here. Um... Spirit Mantle is a bit slow. And maybe just a cartouche as well. So let's do it. Alright, match two game two. Good looking hand that doesn't deal us damage. I'm gonna keep it. Uh, this is likely to be the, the tougher game though, because like I said, four blast zones and sometimes an extra like up to two other effects like Ratchet Bomb or Oblivion Zone. Uh, no high enough umber in hand either. Uh, Bowmat Courier, I guess it's going to start doing things. Hallowed Fountain. Alright, well, we'll just slam down our stuff and... Then we can hold up path as interaction afterwards, so that's pretty sweet. Draw high number. All right, that's not bad. Let's see if we can uh, can find some life gain now. <clears throat> Swift spear. All right, tack on in, Swifty. Tack on in. All right, looks like they're setting up the light up the stage here. Nope, post combat soul scale mage. Well, when you have it, you have it, <laughs> and when you don't, you draw it. All right, I'll definitely take this one. Uh, it's not over yet though. We do have to have another game on the draw. Opponent can start chump blocking us as well, but we do have the path if they just leave back one blocker. All right, that's enough. They concede. Awesome. Anything we want to draw, change on the draw. Maybe Cartouche's Solidarity gets a little more significant, so the token sort of just dies to uh, a Lava Dart in a pretty annoying manner. I think on the draw, maybe we're more likely to want to block, so maybe I can trim a Cartouche for a Sentinel. I uh, am um, trim a Curious Obsession for a Cartouche's Solidarity here. All right, and with that, let's get into it. Definitely not subscribing to this whole ley line against prowess thing. I don't believe in it. I believe in your paths. This matchup. There's not enough burn spells for me to warrant it. Alright, well, uh. This sounds pretty tragic, so we're gonna go to six. Opponent is. What's he doing? He's also going to six, alright. Feels slightly less bad for us. Uh, this hand's like very slow. I think we can do better on five. Oh god, no auras. I. I don't know if we can go lower than this though. Opponents keeping six. Uh, I guess we can see a better four, so and this hand's not gonna win us the game. Alright, this is technically a better four. Bottom, bottom. No, not my force. Everything shifted. Bottom. 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 
Bottom and bottom. Done. All right, let's... Uh, unless we rip some, like, Daybreak Coroner off the top, we're probably just doomed here. They might even kill us sooner. Alright, that's pretty appealing. Play out the Bogle, pass the turn. Alright, opponent attacking us for one. I guess we have to be like semi concerned about Kozlek's return. Light up the stage, sure. Mountain and Lightning Bolt. He's probably got another one mana creature and he's just gonna save Lightning Bolt for next turn. That's really tragic. I think I slow roll the cartouche here. Uh, just play out my invisible stalker. Attack for one, using invisible stalker to chump block. Invisible stalker is a superior attacker, but I guess I can make a decision as to whether or not I want to use it to chump block. Um, it's a superior attacker. It's just like it's going to be a turn later. I don't know how much I can afford being slow and cute here. All right, so. End of our turn, they lightning bolted us instead of waiting for this turn for the prowess trigger. So I guess they've got a whole bunch of prowess spells that they can uh, cast. Only on two mana at the moment. I'm going to let it go. Have they got Blood Moon now? Hard cast bone crush hard cast bone crush a giant. Alright. Oh, that is a good one. Alright. Alright, I'll take it. Everything uh, is slowly falling into place here. So we can attack for three in unblockable, gain three life. Draw a card. Hopefully we draw something that uh, gets us out of this mess. Well there's vigilance. All right, all right. We live to fight another day right now. Just chop lock one at the moment. All right, no other effects. What sort of hand did they keep? Light up the stage again. Blood Moon on top. Well, they can play land and then cast Blood Moon. It doesn't hurt us too bad, though. We've already got most things that we need down. It stops Daybreak Coronet at this point, uh, but we have a basic of each, and we have Vigilance in hand, ready to cast. We have a first striking creature to chump block with. Or not chump block with, to value block with, I suppose. What's the term? So they do decide to cast the Blood Moon, they get a second main prowess trigger. Uh, let's get that Vigilance happening. Get our attack happening. Oh boy, that's that's a nice one. We draw our third and only our third and last basic. Off of the staggering insight, so that we have totem armor now and a safe block. All right, I think we're gonna get there, guys. <laughs> this is epic. All right, Obosh to hand now. Uh, Lava dart in exile. Heart attacks from my opponent. We're at a pretty healthy seventeen right now. All right. Alright, so just make the, I guess, smart chump block if we can. Here comes the lava dart. And we'll go for attacks, unblockable attacks. Any auras off top. Ooh, hidden to miss. 
All right. Any other damaging aura and we get the W next turn. That's perfect. All right, here's Obosh. That's fine. We're at a comfortable 21 and they're pretty darn tapped out. Uh, this is a pretty safe block. This doesn't have any modes in the graveyard either, like um, Season Pyromancer does. What's on top? Aura for the win. Alright, opponent concedes. Alright, he's seen enough. The blue Burgle's getting there. It's got the goods. Alright, so here we are for match number three. We lost the die roll. Opponent is on the play. We've got a one lander here with Invisible Stalker. Opponent keeping seven. No companions. It's a pretty juicy seven. If, if I'm like guaranteed a second land, I'd probably keep it. Oh, it's so high value. Alright, I'm going to risk it. If we if we don't see our second land, we're pretty doomed. Super risk, super risky, but like super high payoff as well. All right, so opponent with the turn one Mystic Sanctuary, passing it over to us. Uh, let's just play out this Hallowed Fountain, and we find Aqueous Form that does not read land, so that's a little bit scary. Uh, I'll try for the second main Invisible Stalker here. Hopefully we get it through. Hopefully no Mana Leak right now. Mana Leak would be bad. We're wanting Growth Spiral right now. Yes, alright, no. Well, Force Negation can't do anything either. Alright, this is all fine. We get our guy. Okay, beautiful. I'm sort of surprised that these decks aren't picking up Spell Pierce a little bit more because it works well with Growth Spiral. And I suppose Uro as well. Wilderness Reclamation, yikes. That's pretty scary. Hmm. See what our opponent does here. Well, we're, we are up against an Uro deck and... I have a feeling like we would have had a better time on the play than here on the draw. And we're just able to resolve that. I'm guessing we're getting tapped down. No tap down yet. Alright. So we get an attack in. Put our opponent to 11. To fairy. Another Wilderness Reclamation. Alright. He's running two copies of that card. That's interesting. Is he making a giant shark typhoon? Leaving one mana up. Scry. Yeah, I respect that. I can't actually see the mana floating at the moment. That's a bit odd. Usually they show that. All right, let's try for some auras pre-combat. Looks like just blue-green uh, Uro. And if we ever get an attack, we'll be in a good spot. This is not working. All right. Imagine Cryptic Command is coming on down, ruining our fun. Tap draw. Yep, sure. Um, no bounce on the Mystic Sanctuary either, so either they've got another fetch land or they've got <coughs> another Cryptic. Search for us, Kanza. I haven't seen this card in a long while. It used to be all the rage for control decks. All right, uh, only two cards left in hand. Opponent running out of things to do. 
That's a lot of mana. Like nine mana right there. Nexus of Fate. All right, sure, whatever. It's all you. You got this one. Scry. What are they doing with this Scry? One top, one bottom. All right. Last zone on one. Well, that's going to eat a few of my auras. <laughs> or are they going to tick it up to two? <laughs> For whatever reason. Alright, there goes my beautiful clock. Main deck blast zone as well. Yeah, this has definitely got to have Hour of Promise and Primeval Titan in it. Those cards with Wilderness Reclamation are a little bit confusing though. Two cards on top. Loving it. Alright, I'm just gonna try and attack for two here. Draw a card. Maybe I draw a counter spell. I can break this lock that my opponent's got me on. One card left in hand though. Uh, they are running out of things to do. Maybe I should have just committed both to the board. Alright, just, uh, you know, pretend that we have something to do with our one mana that's up now. We absolutely do not. <laughs> Alright. Search for us, Kanza. Doing a whole bunch of... Not very much. Land into the graveyard. I guess they draw the other card. Got six cards in the graveyard. They've run out of stuff. I wonder if they've got anything else to do other than just scry here. Now the Nexus of Fate. All right, sure, whatever. <laughs> I suppose with all these wilderness reclamations, they can just abuse Castle Vantress and find uh, Nexus of Fate more readily. Man, Force of Negation would be good right about now, though. That would really put a dampener in their plans. One card left in hand. We're definitely not out of this. So one top, one bottom. They've pitched a land into the bin. And second search of it for Azkanza. Fine, Archmage's Charm. Alright, things are going to become a bit more difficult now. Fact or fiction as well? Gross. The difference a uh, one mana creature would have made here. They can have all their lands and explore, or they can have remand. They take the remand. Wait, no, they take the lands and the explore? Okay. If you ask me, they're valuing explore a little bit too much there. Um... Let's try for Curious Obsession first. There's no guarantee that they have Cryptic here. So the Curious Obsessions aren't necessarily going to fall off into the bin. If they have Cryptic Command, I'm probably just going to scoop at this point. They let that resolve with Archmage's Charm up. They've definitely got the Cryptic. Alright, whatever. Fuck this. I'm out. All right, sideboarding, surgical extraction. Come on in, my friend. And outside of that, I haven't got any more counter magic. Uh, paths could hit like Uro, but... Hmm. So 
Suppression field is semi-reasonable, although probably not. Trickbine could actually be pretty clutch here. Imagine if they play Jace and go to Ultimate Jace, uh, the Mind Sculptor, and we just trickbind it. That would be pretty funny. I'd be happy with that one. So, Spirit Mantle out. It's a little bit slow. I think things like Cartouche can probably come out as well. And might minus an aqueous form as well. All right, let's get into it. Got a whole bunch of auras here. And a rubbish old hand. All right, this one's good. We're going to keep. Ditch your spogel. Let's go. Alright, I'm pretty inclined just to play out the Ethereal Armor and Curious Obsession. Attack for 4, draw a card. Staggering Insight is not that high value in my opinion that I want to rush it out here. Alright, no Force of Negation either there. Beautiful. Another Ethereal Armor off the top, let's go. Uh, if they don't have counter magic here, this could be a very good turn two. Chalice on one? Yeah, sure, whatever. Piss off. You suck. And in for six. All right, one more attack connects, and we should be in a really good spot. Um, no turn to Growth Spiral for my opponent. I wonder if they have the Euro here. Search for his Kanza. All right. Man, we are flooding. It wouldn't be flooding that bad if we could actually cast our one mana spells. No. Two mana spell, two mana spell, beautiful. All right, let's cast that one down. One more attack, and we get the W. Just got to dodge uh, those blast zones right now. Blast zone will just stone dead beat us, unfortunately. Uh oh. <laughs> Is anyone else uh, horrified by this proactive fetch shock on his own turn? Wilderness Reclamation? Nothing? Just cryptic? Okay. I'm alright with that. Alright. Alright. <laughs> We're not dead yet. We are not dead yet. Let's uh, play this one down. Play a land down, pass the turn. Alright, goodbye, Curious Obsession. You did your work. Alright, any attack connects now, and we've got the win. Nexus of Fate, found on top, shuffles it into their library. Alright, so they put it into the graveyard with the Search for Us Cancer trigger. I'll take it. You know what card I like exiling? I really like exiling Cryptic Command. Uh, it's one of my favorite things. No Force of Negation, please. All right, opponent concedes. Sweet, we get a game three. Oh, that was pretty terrifying. Uh, fortunately, they just did nothing. Okay. All right. Uh, I might want this Echoing Truth because you know Chalice. And I might bring in the Spirit Mantle as well, minus Aqueous Form. Gosh, what else do I minus? I might just minus a land. Alright, let's go. Let's get into it. Oh, 
Oh, no, blue mana. All right, we got to throw this one. No creature. How unfortunate. Goes down to a terrible game three like this. Well, I guess we got to keep this five. Uh, we're missing land. And uh, our hand is pretty garbage. So opponent is on six cards here. And if we hit land, we can get there. We hit land and they've got a slightly slow hand, maybe. All right, so opponent with the turn one Mystic Sanctuary in tap. We find Force and Negation. That could be pretty clutch. Force on one could work pretty nicely for us. Stop that chalice if that's what they're going for. Uh, we do need to draw a second mana source, though. Preferably, you know, white. Although all our mana taps for white that's left in the deck. All right, here's the chalice. Let's, uh... It's an explore. All right. Explorer is fine. Please fail to play a land. Oh, damn. <laughs> that would have been great. Oh, fuck off, man. Ah, uh, bad beats. This hand with two mana would have been great. And to make matters worse, our six card hand would have been keepable with one mana, but it was a basic planes. Because we had the one mana creature and we had Curious Obsession. Damn. Feels bad. Alright, go for that. Go for that Woodenness Reclamation. Alright, well... <laughs> Awkward. Awkward. Surely after we cast one Invisible Stalker, they're just going to look to tap out afterwards. Although, we're not even getting to that stage. And step scry two. That's pretty gross. Putting two cards on the bottom. Alright, goodbye, Ethereal Armor. You're no good against this control deck. And there's the breeding pool. Into... Are they holding up? Okay, I was gonna say, are they holding up counter magic? For, uh, the Wilderness Reclamation here? Land, come on, for the love of God, let's see a land. All right. And this will get cryptic. Commanded. And then hopefully they tap out for something during their turn and I can resolve the other one. Um, I think that's the best we can hope for here. The biggest decisions whether or not to counter this, guys. Big, big decision here. Um, who knows what the right play is? Do we let it resolve? Do we counter it? I mean, the deck seems to do not very much without a creature on the board. Maybe we should let it resolve. Alright, so they cryptic, counter, and bounce Mystic Sanctuary. Sure, that's fine. Please tap out. Please tap out. Go for that wilderness reclamation. You know you want to. Sure, whatever. They can have explore. I don't care about that. Down to two cards in hand. Oh, baby. It's a pretty good one. So I can strip all the cryptics out of their deck, which is pretty massive. Assuming they don't have any way to deal with us casting Surgical Extraction. Presumably it would be Force of Negation that would uh, get it. So... 
Maybe I should go to Enstaff and see if he cracks his fetch land there. Oh, wait. Fuck, I'm a dickhead. Oh, never mind. We just lose. All right, fucking get out of this. Uh, I definitely wait until end step. Uh, I'm an absolute idiot. Uh, we're very low chance to win in that one anyway, though. Okay, so match number four here, and we won the die roll. We're going to be on the play. This hand has no blue mana. We've got to ditch it. Opponent is on a Urian deck. Gross. All right, this hand is way, way better. I'm going to keep it, ditch the invisible stalker, and then we can start attacking, drawing cards, uh, dealing damage. All of that seems really good. All right, so ditch that one. Opponent keeping seven. See Chrome Cursed into the Slippery Bogle. There was a stop in my upkeep or draw step there, which means my opponent's probably on a more controlling Urian list rather than like the Hate Bear list that's running about. Alright, well, he's got some descriptions of creatures in his deck. Uh, we'll just slam all our good cards. Alright, draw me into some spice. <clears throat> Stubborn Denial, alright. I'll take it. Stubborn Denial is live, guys. Stubby D is live. Planes. Stoneforge Mystic, sure. Alright, so I guess maybe they are more of a um, hate bears list here. Batiskull entering the revealed card zone. And, you know, we just, uh, we draw the Sea Chrome Coast, so now we can hold up Stubborn Denial, we can attack and draw a card. Uh, yeah, this is all looking pretty sweet. We do fly over the top. Of our opponent's batter skull too. Uh, I think this one's going to be a W. Alright. And we've even got Stubborn Denial to stop anything that is not Stoneforge Mystic. Flicker Wisp, sure. Sure. Uh, well, we just put that back down on our creature. Uh... Wait, he's actually got a flying creature to chub block with. Yeah, right. Uh, what do we find? Evasion? Evasion? Not evasion. Alright, I guess we just crack. Get a basic... Attack, gain some life. Uh, he's unfortunately going to chump block, but that's okay. Uh, uh. Opponent needs like land into another Flicker Wisp and Giver of Runes to start like. To stop us from just attacking and trading with their flicker wisps all turn, every turn. Um, question is, are they running any blue at all? Blue means things like Teferi. Ah, uh, no. Oh, I'm just recast. All right, so opponents seen that interaction with auras for the first time. All right, stubby D for the clutch play, and then we attack for 12, get the win. Beautiful. All right, absolutely textbook. Obviously, if we had force in hand, we could have just not played Daybreak and also been fine. All right, so opponent with ETBs. And Wrath of God. Ah, it's pretty reactionary. I don't think we want it. Torporob and Path seem good. 
Arcane Flight seems a little bit weak. Aqueous Form plus Spirit Mantle will have to be our evasion. I think Teferi is my main issue here. Uh, so I might... What else can I trim? Cartouche is reasonable. Sentinel's Eyes is good. Aqueous Form I sort of need. Staggering Insights may be slightly slow, so I could trim one. Problem is, if we don't bring in Suppression Field, their Giver of Rune runes just protect their creatures from our removal. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's just go down on paths here. Um... Not entirely certain that my opponent's running blue, because wouldn't they have Supreme Verdict over Wrath of God? Alright, we got a an Invisible Stalker and a Cartouche. This hand's pretty slow and crap. Let's uh, mullet look for something better. This hand is significantly better. We will keep and we will ditch the Invisible Stalker, even though it has the unblockable. Hopefully we don't just get jump blocked out. Hopefully we draw mana on curve as well. Alright, opponent with another one of those lands. Ooh, another curious obsession. Not too bad. Not too bad. Beginning of your upkeep, if you control seven or more fanes, you may return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. I mean, why not run some number of copies of that in his list? Uh, Charming Prince is absolutely fine. Hopefully we see land here. If not, I might have to Hyena Umbra. Uh, scries two to the bottom. I guess we're casting Hyena Umbra here. Damn. Stubby D was clutched last game, but, uh, pretty not happy to see it in that spot. Pretty unhappy. Thrabian Inspector. Alright, this is potentially a pretty budget list. Charming Prince attacking for two. Alright, well this is all fine by me. It looks like my opponent missed a land drop as well. Land? Land? It's not land. Alright, so well, Curious Obsession will attack here. Hopefully he doesn't block and we're allowed to draw a card. I suspect he will block though. Alright, he does. So if he draws mana, he can then Skyclave Apparition us, which sucks for us a little bit. Turned Pike Bear. With a really cool squirrel profile pick. Alright, so attacking with Charming Prince. He has hit his third mana. And I smell Skyclave Evaporation here. I oh, just a Flicker Wisp. Alright, that's fine by me. Flicker Wisp is Char Charming Prince. That makes sense. Fair play. So going for the Scry 2. My opponent wants to uh, Charming Prince exile his Flicker Wisp. Uh, I won't get my aura back until my next end step there. Land. Thank you. Alright, so... Vigilance. I have a large feeling like my opponent's just going to chump block me. Might be better off holding up path here. Sneaking suspicion. Alright, there's the, char uh, the chump block. Charming Prince into the grave. Uh, once they get up to seven planes, they can start getting it back. Captain Ranger of Eos. What's he searching for? Is this a Heliod combo deck? Therabian Inspector. Odd. All 
All right, so I guess I'm just going to path this Captain Ranger of Eos end step here. Uh, enable me to... He can sack it in response and uh, put it into his graveyard for the Emiria as well, by the way. Chooses not to. All right, let's attack. We've got an Invisible Stalker to go in on now. And... Guess my opponent can still Wrath of God, but it hits his Flicker Wisp. Uh, he kind of wins the value on that one. I don't have too much of a choice. I think I have to commit it. Alright, no Wrath, please. Sword of Feast and Famine. Alright, well, uh, sucks that he hardcasts that one in. We could have countered that. Would have been good. He gets protection from green now. He's attacking. He gets to make us discard, untap his mana. Just discard a Bogle. Down to two cards in hand. He can start sacking these clues, but he's going to be running out of resources soon, hopefully. Yuri into hand. All right. All right, Yuri in... Doesn't cause too much trouble for us, actually. <clears throat> Find a spirit mantle. All right, let's uh, jam this curious obsession on the stalker. Uh, we'll attack with both creatures, draw from cards. Force of negation to hand. That can be pretty handy, potentially. And what's our other one? Ethereal Armor. It's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to commit that to the Stalker. We can play around Wrath with the Force of Negation here. And with the Spirit Mantle next turn, we can actually attack for the win as well. Alright, this is pretty clutch here if we get there. Fortunately, our opponent's not running the most streamlined list, or else we probably would have lost this. Well, from what I've seen, it doesn't look like the most streamlined list. Thundering Titan enters the battlefield or attack. You may return target permanent with converted mana cost of three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. All right. So they can get back a Charming Prince, gain some life. It's not the end of the world. Arid Mesa. What's he doing with the white mana here? Um... Another Therabian Inspector is all I can think of, but that seems odd. Sundering Titan with Urian's pretty interesting tech. That's pretty funky. Get get back everything that's been attrition to the bin. Oh, they get to untap their lands, right? If we discard either of our blue cards here, we lose to Wrath of God. Um, but it's also our best route to victory. So I'm just going to pitch the Stubborn Denial there. Let that go to the bin. Hopefully he plays a Urian and expects to chump lock. And then we can just blow him out with Spirit Mantle. Actually, if they play Thalia, we're in trouble as well. Unless we hit Mana. All right, Wall of Omens is fine. If he is taking the turn to do that, I feel very good about us uh, being able to get to our next turn all nice and comfortably. All right, sweet. There's the Urian. Whew. Close call, but we're getting that. All right, bring back all your rubbish. Get your other rubbish. That's fine. I guess they're going to gain some life on uh, Charming Prince this time. Their mana worked out perfectly as well, so them getting the Arid Mesa actually uh, turned out to make a decent amount of sense. There will be no chump blocking this game, though. 
Sorry to tell you, opponent. I just have to hope this is enough damage, right? <laughs> We're like, oh, exactly enough damage. Perfect. All right, we played the game well. Let's go, team. <laughs> we drew exactly enough cards to get us there. What is the go? All right, sweet. <laughs> Three and one. Very nice. All right, so match number five here. We lost the die roll. That means we're on the draw. No creature, one basic island in hand. Easy mulligan. Opponent keeping seven. And sounds looking a decent amount better. Let's keep up. Pitch the staggering insight. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Could be very funny if our opponent does like turn one creature into turn two creature attack. Oh, it's Heliod combo? No. It's just Ponza. Right. All right, well, Stubborn Denial still has a chance to be very good for us here. We just need our opponent to not have Utopia sprawl into Blood Moon. I guess Magus of the Moon is like really bad for us as well. Um, go for the Blood Moon, buddy. Go for the Blood Moon. No, you want to. Pyromancer? Is that all? Really? Alright. Well, that does not work out nicely for us. Burst lightning to the graveyard. Interesting. Uh, we do find a windswept teeth, so we can search out a basic now. Man, uh... <laughs> This might be sad if this force was a, uh, if this Stubborn Denial was a force, we might actually be able to counter a Blood Moon this turn. Um, that's the power of not having to tap out. <laughs> or being able to tap out and have interaction um, in your opponent's turn. Obosh to hand. All right. <laughs> we will take some damage. Ooh, force of negation. Oh, baby. Don't mind that at all. We draw the mana. We can play out our Daybreak Coronet here. We get, uh, we get the card draw trained online. And we've got safety. All right, this hand, this this game was potentially bad, but we've dug ourselves out of it with the help of the top of our library. Ooh, clutch times. Unblockable lifelink first strike draws us cards. You love to see it. Okay, and fly it off the top. All right, that's more, more spells to cast here. So the lesson here is turn three season Pyromancer is very underwhelming against us. Sorry, turn two season Pyromancer is very underwhelming compared to like a Blood Moon one. All right, looks like o Obosh has entered the battlefield. Opponent can't attack. It's kind of funny. Opponent cannot attack. They uh, lose more life than they gain if they do that. And just gonna make a bigger creature, gain some more life, get draw some more cards. Everything is under control in this game. Who needs Delva for aggro control when you've got blue-white bogles? <clears throat> Find a sentinel's eyes off the top as well. I mean, we'll just uh, shock this one in. 
And pass the turn. Now we've got double counter magic up now. Chop block the Obosh if they choose to attack. Opponent concedes. All right, go team. Go team. Not too shabby at all. I wonder if I should expect things like Blast Zone from this deck. We've seen Arbor Alpha. It would be pretty bad with their Utopia Sprawls as well that they probably have. Uh, so I think we can just say that it's pretty unlikely that they have Blast Zone. Maybe they have Ratchet Bomb. I think I mostly like my counter magic. I want to bring in my removal and my echoing truths here. Uh, my pass will answer Magus of the Moon or things like Obosh. Um, my echoing truth can bounce a Blood Moon. Um, and having vigilance, like having a Scry One, is less important than that. And maybe I can minus a Cartouche for the other Southern Denial. Mm. I might just, I might not want this many non-creature spells though. They might just be blanking. Thing is, if I have a, an invisible stalker hand, I'm want, kind of want the uh, stubborn denial. So I have turn one play. Uh, we got no creature here. Otherwise this hand would look good. Swap out a land for a creature and uh, we would have a really good hand. So mulligan. Opponent has also mulligan to six. All right, well, we're going down to five. We've got some basics here. <laughs> we can avoid the Blood Moon blowout, but that's not going to be good enough. All right, well, we've got to keep finally. And bottom. Bottom. I can't cast Daybreak Coronet with this combination of lands, but it does play around Blood Moon. I think we sort of have to do this. We can just win without Daybreak Coronet, anyway. Here comes the Stomping Ground. In tapped. You love to see it. Alright. Go team. We find the Staggering Insight as well. Uh, so that's really nice. Wonder if my opponent's setting up for a turn 3 Anger of the Gods here. If so, Hyena Umbra would be a clutch draw. Hex Drinker? People play that card? Uh, okay. Oh, that's a pretty good draw as well. I'll take it. Can we lock the basic, uh, ba other basic land here as well? That would just be the cherry on top. Sacking in for three. Look how nice all of this works together. Our opponent is going for the chump block here. Preventing that card draw, but losing the hex drinker, which they've sunk two mana into. So we'll just let all that happen. No anger of the gods, please. Oh boy. I'm terrified. Just do bosh to hand. Uh, <laughs> absolutely terrified of anger of the gods right now. Pillage. All right. Well, that's not the worst thing ever. Haha. <laughs> Expecting something super gross and your opponent goes and disappoints you with a pillage. Uh, I'll take it. I'll tell you that much. Alright, well, uh, his, his choice in what he targeted was very good there. Now he's we switched off any of the auras in our hand at this point. Another pillage? Choke. 
<laughs> Opponents brought in choke against me. That's hilarious. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> All right, let's go. Get out that ethereal armor. All right. All right. No longer scared of anger of the gods. <laughs> we are getting there. All right, what else has my opponent got left? The choker uh, did nothing. The pillage did nothing. The magus of the moon doing nothing. I mean, he sort of has to block. Uh, I don't really mind tapping my island here because we get down staggering in sight and that's pretty juicy one. Once we connect two attacks, we win. Um, our opponent jump blocks with the Magus of the Moon. Sure. Definitely living on borrowed time at this point. Alright, all the way up to 26. <laughs> Obosh to hand, but we like just kill you. Got a nice mountain in hand here. <clears throat> All right, so attack for 10. And we get the draw train happening again. Let's go draw train. See, Chromeco, stubborn denial. All right, well, uh... Now we've got stubborn denial up as well. This feels pretty good. <laughs> This choke looks way worse than a Blood Moon at the moment. <laughs> I guess in conjunction with Blood Moon it would be pretty good. Opponent concedes. There is the 4-1, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful stuff. Well, I can safely say the Sentinel's eyes felt really good. Um, the Cartouche of Solidarity is I didn't really see much of, so I can't form an opinion on that. Spirit Mantle, eh, sort of medium. Um... Still not like super in love with Aqueous form, but it has its role in letting us attack through Giver of Runes with Skyclave, with um, Flicker Wisp decks with flying. Um, other than that, sideboard wise, I think this second trick binds probably just a little bit greedy. You go for like a path or an extra Torpor Orb. I think I'm inclined for the Torpor Orb there. And yeah, this looks pretty sweet to me. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to continue streaming, but for those of you on YouTube, uh, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to let me know what you thought down below. Uh, if you're new, subscribe for daily Bogle content. Uh, if you haven't already, look me up on Twitch. Link in the description and ring the bell for more. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.